Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Achieve IES. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So in this video we will be talking about our daily current affair MCQ series in which what we do we daily discuss MCQs from current affair perspective. So today, today is 23 November uh, 2019. So let's see what are the questions for today. So the first question is consider the following statements. First, the Convention on Cybercrime of the Council of Europe is also known as Budapest Convention on Cybercrime or the Budapest Convention. Second, it is the first international treaty seeking to address cybercrime by harmonizing national laws, improving investigative techniques and increasing cooperation among nations. So we have to choose that which of these statements are correct. Let me tell you friends that both of these statements are correct. So this convention that is on cyber, uh, cyber crime of the Council of uh, Europe, it is also known as Budapest Convention on Cyber Crime or the, uh, simply the Budapest Convention. So it is basically first international treaty that seeks to address the cyber crime by basically harmonizing uh, the laws of different nations and improving the investigative techniques uh, and increasing cooperation among nations through information sharing. So the answer is C, that is both are correct. So India maintained its status as a non-member of the Europe led the Budapest Convention even as it voted in favor of Russian led UN resolution to set up a separate convention. So India, please note that uh, India is not a signatory to Budapest Convention and even uh, India has uh, uh, maintained this status and, uh, uh, and it has voted in favor of a Russian led, uh, uh, Russian -led UN resolution that a separate convention be set up. So this Budapest Convention, uh, it is the first international treaty to address uh, uh, cyber crime by harmonizing national laws, improving uh, investigating techniques and increasing cooperation among nations. So following offenses are defined by the convention, for example, illegal access, illegal interception, misuse of devices, computer related fraud, offenses related to child pornography and offenses related to copyright and neighboring rights. So it was opened for signature in Budapest in 2001 and it entered into force in 2004. So participants are, it was basically drawn uh, by the Council of Europe uh, with the active participation of uh, Council of Europe's observer states. For example, Canada, Jap Japan, Philippines, South Africa and United States. So as of now, uh, as of September 2019, 64 states have ratified the convention. So Brazil and India have uh, declined to adopt uh, the convention on the grounds that they did not participate in its uh, drafting. So Russia opposes the convention stating that the adoption would violate Russian sovereignty. So uh, you must be knowing that where the Budapest is. So it is in uh, it is at the border of Hungary and uh, you can see it. So not at the border. Uh, it is basically in the Hungary. So uh, Budapest is in uh, is in Hungary. So please note this. Uh, this, uh, this is very important because sometimes uh, UPSC asks twisted questions. So in that context, students uh, uh, feel uh, we can say um, feel betrayed by the UPSC, but UPSC has no feelings for you people. So please uh, do ensure that you cover the questions from multiple angles. Now let's move to the next question. Next is consider the following statements. First, India is ranked 100 out of 110 countries in Nam Nomura's Food Vulnerability Index. Second, Nomura's Food Vulnerability Index ranks countries on the basis of their exposure to large swings in food prices so we have to choose that which of these statements are not correct so let me tell you friends first uh, is not correct second is correct so the answer is a so so according to a new report uh, by uh, Nomura global market research India is ranked 44 out of 110 countries so India is not ranked 100th but 44th in Nomura's Food Vulnerability Index. So statement 1, uh, stat first statement is incorrect. Uh, so it must, uh, is incorrect. So uh, here it, there is a typing mistake. And Nomura's uh, Food vulnerability, uh, vulnerability Index ranks countries on the basis of their exposure to large swings in food prices. So extra knowledge is that uh, this Nomura Food uh, vulnerability, vul vulnerability Index has three components that is country's GDP per per person and then share of food in household consumption and then net food imports. So key findings are that 50 countries most vulnerable to food price uh, surges in the coming months largely belong to the emerging market group to, uh, uh, and the top 50 together account for almost 60% of the uh, GDP of the world. So India has been ranked 44 out of 110 countries. The higher rank is uh, worse. 
so please note this <laughs> so you must not uh, uh, feel proud and then a at 4.6 percent india's retail inflation for october touched a 16 month high because of the jump in food prices so food inflation inflation almost grew by eight percent almost double the rate of overall retail inflation so key items that contributed to this rise were pulses inflation rate uh, 12 percent and vegetables with inflation rate of 26 percent and fish and infl uh, meat inflation rate uh, in which is 10 percent so nomura is basically asia headquartered financial services group, group with an integrated global network spanning 30 countries so now let's move to the next question. Next is which country has approved the sale of MK-45 gun system to India? A. Israel, B. Russia, C. France, D. USA. So we have to choose that which of these is, is correct. So friends, the answer is USA. So USA has uh, decided to uh, sell this MK-45 gun system to India. So what is this? So uh, before going uh, uh, into, into further de uh, detail, let's see what, what is the basically deal. So US State de Department has approved uh, the sale of 13 MK45 uh, 5 inch 62 caliber naval guns and some other equipments worth $1 billion to uh, India for use against warships, anti-aircraft and shore bombardment. So the items will be manufactured by BAE Systems Land and Armaments. So it is basically a fully automatic naval gun system that is installed on ships and provides a naval surface fire support range of more than 20 nautical miles that is 36 km along with improved propelling charge. So it is an upgraded version with a 62 caliber barrel, barrel, strengthened gun and mount subsystems, advanced control system enhancements, greater range and firepower, a reduced signature and low maintenance gun shield. So this system of guns is currently in use by US Navy on their fleet of uh, fleet of uh, Tycon Deroga uh, class cruisers and uh, Arleigh Burke class destroyers. So other countries that have uh, been sold this MOD4 naval guns are Japan, Australia and South Korea. So the US may also sell these guns to other allies including Britain and Canada. So the Indian government had requested the US to buy up to 13 MK45 uh, 5 inch 62 caliber MOD4 gun, naval guns and 3500 D349 projectile 5 inch 54 caliber ammunition. So you can see here, so uh, this is basically the gun equipment which, are, which is being sold. So uh, you can see the bullet here fired. So if you are interested in all these things, you can pause the video and can see the uh, photograph clearly. So there would, will also be videos available on YouTube. So you can check the, them also. So which of the following statements are correct about Lala Rai? First in 1885, Rai established the Dhyanand Anglo Vedic uh, school in Lahore and remained a committed educationist throughout his life. Second, he became a follower of Dhyanand Saraswati, the founder of the R.S. Samaj and went on to become one of the society's leader. Third, he was elected president of the Indian National Congress during its special session in Kolkata in 1909. So we have to choose that which of these st uh, statements is correct. Let me tell you only two statements are correct and that is first and second. So the answer is A. So Rai was, uh, Pat, Rai was elected president of INC uh, during its special session in Kolkata in 1920 so which uh, this and this session saw the launch of a non-cooperation movement so subsequently he was imprisonment from uh, imprisoned from 1921 to 93 so statement 3 is incorrect so death anniversary of Lala Lajput tried the firebrand of Indian nationalist leader affectionately called Punjab Kesri was recently observed so he born at Dhurike near Ludhiana in Punjab in 1865 so he studied law at the government college Lahore and had a legal practice in that city and uh, early in life he came a, became a follower of Dayanand Saraswati the founder of Arya Samaj and went on to become one of the society's leader so in 1885 he established Dayanand Anglo Vedic uh, school in Lahore and remained a, a committed educationist throughout his life so 1881 in 1881 he joined Indian National Congress so Lal Bal uh, Pal uh, fervently advocated the use of Sardeshi goods and uh, mass agitation in the aftermath of the controversial partition of Bengal in 1905 by Lord Karzan. So in 1913, Rice set out for a lecture, a lecture tour to Japan, England and the United States. So during his travels, he met many diaspora communities and founded the Indian Home Rule League of America in New York in uh, uh, 1917. 
So upon his return, he was elected the president of INC during its special session in Kolkata in 1920, which saw the launch of uh, non-cooperation movement. So he was subsequently imprisoned imprisoned from 1921 to 23. So in 1980, 20, uh, 1928, he opposed Simon Commission, uh, uh, which was an all-white uh, uh, commission, uh, uh, which was to basically uh, review the Government of India Act 1919. So seven, uh, the group of seven did not consist even a single Indian member. So that's why it was opposed. So there lot charge happened and uh, in which he was injured. So it was after this the tribe famously uh, said the bo uh, blow struck at me today will be the last nails in the coffin of British rule in India. So he died a few days later on November 17. So he also wrote extensively in English and Urdu. So his important works were the R.S. Samaj, Young India, England's Jab to India, Evolution of Japan, India's Will to Freedom, Message of Bhagavad Gita, Political Future of in India, Problem of National Education in India, The Depressed Glasses and the Travelogue, United uh, States of America. Now let's move. Uh, so here you can see the photograph of the um, uh, this stalwart. Uh, and next is which state government has launched Arundhati Swarna Yojana? Uh, A Madhya Pradesh, B Maharashtra, C U P D Assam. So answer is D uh, uh, Assam. So Assam government has launched the uh, launched Arundhati Swarna Yojana. So key feature is of the scheme is the state government will offer 10 grams of gold as a gift to every adult bride who has completed at least 10th standard and has registered. Uh, her marriage and uh, the no government will not g give the gold directly but uh, rupees 30,000 but it will give rupees 30,000 to purchase 10 grams of gold. So eligibility uh, is that annual income of the bride's family must be less than 5 lakh rupees to avail the scheme uh, and uh, uh, <coughs> Minimum age should be 18 years and 21 years for the bride and the bridegroom respectively. So family has to register the marriage under the special marriage uh, some rules 1954. So minimum education should be 10th standard. However, minimum educational qualification criteria uh, have been, has been rela relaxed for the tribes and workers of tea gardens. So eligible bride and bridegroom must apply for the scheme before the date of their wedding. Now let's move to the next question. Next is which of the following statements are correct about avian uh, brutalism. First, the good monsoon provided a favorable environment for the bacteria to sp uh, spread. Uh, second is the bacteria needs a nearby absence of oxygen conditions and does not grow in acidic conditions. So here we have to choose that which of these is correct. Let me tell you friends that both of these are correct. So you might be aware of the fact that a lot of birds have died uh, 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 near the Sambar Lake. So that uh, that's why this question has been framed. So uh, avian brutalism is said to be the reason behind the deaths of 18,000 birds in and around Rajasthan Sambar Lake. So what happened in Sambar is basically according to the report, uh, uh, this uh, avian brutalism in Sambar was caused by climate. So fluctuating water levels, uh, 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 they, the, the water level fluctuated throughout the year uh, and due to a good monsoon this year, the water level reached the lake bed after a gap of um, uh, 20 years. So favorable, uh, this, this was a kind of favorable environment for bacteria. So good monsoon provided a favorable environment for the bacteria to spread. The bacteria needs anaerobic, that is absence of uh, oxygen conditions and does not grow in acidic conditions. So nutrient rich substrate, so lake also provides a nutrient rich substrate like areas with large amounts of decaying plant or animal material. So monsoon brought it with it a large population of crustaceans like shrimps, crabs and prawns, invertebrates and plankton. So which are capable of hosting the bacteria for a long period of time. So now what happened is that there are two theories. So bacteria is also found in the gills and digestive tracts, tracts of healthy fish. So it reproduces through spores and these spores remain uh, dormant for years. So they are resistant to temperature changes and drying. So on, under favorable conditions, the spores are activated after the monsoon when the water levels reduce. Uh, there might have been an increase in salinity levels which could have led to the death of these living organisms. At this t point in time, the spores could have been activated. So bird to bird cycle could also have led to the tragedy in such an event maggots uh, feeding on dead birds can concentrate the toxin. So birds feeding on dead birds can get affected. This was observed in summer too as researchers found only insectivorous and omnivorous birds affected and not herbivores. So extra knowledge is that uh, Pambal Salt Lake is India's largest inland salt water body located near Jaipur in Rajasthan. So lake is surrounded on all sides by Aravli Hills. So it is a source of most of Rajasthan's salt production. So Sambar has been designated as uh, Ramsar site uh, that is recognized under the wetland of international importance uh, Ramsar Convention because the wetland is a key wintering area for tens of thousands of flamingos and other birds that migrate uh, from uh, northern Asia. 
so here you can see the Sambar Lake is here in uh, Rajasthan. So now let's move to the next question. Next is consider the following statements. First, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime uh, was established in 1997. Second, UNODC publishes World Drug Report that new psychoactive substances are defined as substances of abuse either in a pure form or a preparation that are not controlled by United Nations drug conventions but they may pose a public health threat. So we have to choose that which of these statements are correct. Let me tell you friends that all of these statements are correct. So de to deal with the uh, such uh, the, uh, the abuse use of synthetic drugs and new psychotropic substances. The government is considering generic scheduling of drugs to replace the practice of substance by substance uh, scheduling. So apart from this, the Narco Coordination Center discussed the issue of large-scale heroin trafficking from neighboring countries, the diversion and abuse of pharmaceutical preparations and poppy opium cultivation in the country. Uh, so NPS uh, are defined as substances of abuse either in a pure, pure form or a preparation that are not controlled by United Nations drug conventions but which may pose a public health threat. So uh, more details you can read by pausing the video because already 15 minutes have passed and we have just covered 6 uh, questions until now. Uh, so let's move on to the next question. So next is which of the uh, only five questions which of the following statements are correct about consultative committee committees first these committees are constituted by ministry of parliamentary affairs second these are normally constituted after the new Lok Sabha is constituted second uh, third is this implies that these committees stand dissolved upon dissolution of every Lok Sabha and thus are reconstituted upon constitution of each Lok Sabha uh, fourth is these uh, committees are attached to various ministries departments of the central government so we have to choose that which of these is correct let me tell you friends the answer is D that is all of them is correct uh, so answer is D. So Farooq Abdullah and Pragya Thakur have been nominated as members of Consultative Committee of Parliament for the Ministry of Defence. The so committee comprises 12 members from the Lok Sabha and 9 from the Rajya Sabha and is chaired by Defence Minister. So Consultative Committee's formation is uh, this is for these committees are constituted by Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs and are normally constituted after the new Lok Sabha uh, is constituted. So they stand dissolved when Lok Sabha is dissolved. So they have to be constituted after each Lok Sabha. So guidelines are there about its composition uh, and these are formulated by Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs. So Home Ministry also makes arrangement for holding their meetings during both the uh, session as well as intercession period of Parliament. So these consist of members of both houses of Parliament. However, the membership of these committees is volunt uh, voluntary and is left to the choice of the members and the leaders of their party. So maximum membership of committee is 30 and minimum is 10. So function uh, functions are very many. You can read about them by pausing the video. Now let's move to the next question. Next is consider the following statements. First, the Central Road and Infrastructure Fund, earlier known as Central Road Fund, was established in 2000 under the Central Road Fund Act 2000. Second, the administrative control of the Central Road and Infrastructure Fund falls under the Ministry of Finance. So we have to choose that which of these statements are correct. Let me tell you, friends, that both of these statements are correct. So Union Ministry, uh, Union Minister for Road Transport and Highways informed that uh, Central Road and uh, Infrastructure Fund in Lok Sabha during the winter uh, informed about uh, this uh, uh, fund in Lok Sabha about the in, in winter parliamentary sessions, so Central Road and Infrastructure Fund was established in 2000 under the Central Road Fund Act. So more details you can read about it by pausing the video. Now let's move to the next question. Next is uh, uh, consider the following terms. First, the green steel refers to steel making process that lowers greenhouse gas emissions, cuts costs, and improves the quality of steel. Second, to move uh, to move towards green steel, the Ministry of Science and Technology Ministry of Science uh, has launched Pradhan Mantri Urja Ganga project in Eastern India. So we have to choose that which of these is correct. Let me tell you, friends, that only one statement is correct, and that is first. So answer is A. To move towards green steel, the petroleum and Natural Gas Ministry has launched this uh, Pradhan Mantri Urja Ganga project in Eastern India. So term refers to steel making process that lowers the greenhouse gases and uh, their emission their, uh, and cuts the cost and uh, also improves the quality of steel. So to move towards green steel, Petroleum and Natural Gas Ministry has launched this project that is Pradhan Mantri Urja Ganga project in Eastern India which can provide gas to all sleep, uh, steel plants located in the area. So gas will help in replacing coal in steel making process uh, uh, as you usage of coal leads to large amount of carbon dioxide emissions. So this is Urja Ganga uh, project uh, which is uh, which is where, where the gas will be supplied. These are the areas. Now let's move to the next question. Next is considering the following statements. First, Fastag is an electronic toll collection system in India operated by National Highways Authority of India. Second, it, all, uh, it employs radio frequency identification technology for making toll payments directly from the prepaid or savings account linked to it or directly toll owner. So which of these statements are correct? Let me tell you friends that both of these statements are correct. So you might be aware about it, might be aware of it. Uh, so Fastag 
tag is our kind of basically it is a reloadable tags uh, tags for payment at all toll booths so will be it will be available for free until the november 30 minister for road transport and highways nitin gadkari has said so announcement has come after a week a, a week before fast tags become mandatory at all um, booths on national highways from december 1 so it is an electronic tax collection a toll collection system in india that that will be operated by national highways authority of india so also then 7.5% cashback offers were also provi promoted provided to promote the use of fast tag so dedicated lanes at some uh, toll plazas have been built for fast tag so in january 2019 state run all marketing companies uh, have signed memorandum of understanding enabling the use of fast tags to make purchases at petrol pumps so then also uh, uh, fast tag lanes are available on over national uh, 5000 national and state highways and over 54.6 lakh cars are enabled with fast tag now let's move to the last question of the day last is the first ever india and us armed forces tri services exercise tiger trump concluded of the kakinada coast east godavari district second this was the first tri services exercised by both countries on humanitarian assistance and uh, disaster relief so which of these statements are correct are not correct let me tell you friend that both of these statements are not correct so the answer is c uh, so uh, this is the first ever india and us armed forces tri services uh, uh, exercise tiger trump uh, uh, tiger the trump triumph concluded of the kakinada coast uh, east godavari district uh, uh, sorry friends uh, here it is uh, it, uh, it is or not it answer must be it must be d so there is a mistake in it i think there is a typing mistake so because uh, none of them is uh, uh, incorrect so yes first is uh, first is correct and this was the first tri services exercised by both countries on humanitarian assistance and disaster relief so apart from uh, indian navy ships ins jalshava and us navy ship uss german town over 5000 us marines and sailors and 1200 indian soldiers and officers participated in the exercise so it exposed indian and us forces to different training environments weaponry and tactics So India's role uh, it has also uh, enabled India uh, showcased India's role as stabilizing power in the region is critical for trade and transit between the Indian Pacific oceans. So India and the United States have a shared vision of a free and open Indo-Pacific region that provides prosperity and security for all. So friends, this is all about today's discussion of daily current affair MCQ. So I hope this discussion is quite comprehensive and it it must have satisfied you people, because uh, we just don't discuss uh, uh, for the purpose of just discussing. We uh, we try to make the uh, current affairs as comprehensive as possible. So our team members are fully dedicated on this effort. So so that you people can get a comprehensive idea about not just you you not just solve MCQs but also important current affairs are covered. So if in case you like this video, then do ensure that you like it, share it with your friends, and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel. And lastly, before ending, um, uh, this is our Telegram channel. The link of which is shown on your screen. So here we have more than fifteen thousand subscribers. So they who are getting access to our various public services uh, that we run for the purpose of CSE preparation. So if you are interested in um, getting access to those services. is then you can join our telegram channel so this is all about friends today's video do ensure like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel thank you friends have a very nice day